Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking all about the Champion Clicks Open Qualifier that happened in Sioux Falls, South Dakota this past weekend. This is episode 496. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Now, now, now. We don't have intro music this week. Simeon's asleep. It's 11 o'clock on a Wednesday night. And Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. If you want to buy straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order. As you may have guessed, uh, yeah, Simeon's not going to be on this podcast. Instead, I'll be joined by Ian. An electric guitar. A electric guitar, which mm-hmm. is the spirit also known as Ian <laughs> Eggleston. Mm-hmm. Ian Eggleston, comma the electric guitar. <laughs> Used to be a chainsaw. I've since that is true. since changed to a guitar. Peep, peep the Discord name. Is it changed? Is it now Ian Electric Guitar? We'll see what happens. Ian, uh, what's going on? What made you happy this week, my man? We'll just start oh, off man. quick and easy. I suppose it's been a while since I've been on here, so I should probably give you guys all a life update. Uh, I took a new job at a new hotel, which is the nicest in the state of, or in Nebraska, geez, state of Omaha. Omaha. (laughs) My goodness. Uh, And it's been really exciting. It's been a lot of fun. And just transitioning into that, after having a few weeks off, it was a bit of a bummer to have to go back to work, but that's okay. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been a really fun time. I'm now a manager, which is, oh, you know, it's exciting. And what made me happy specifically this week was that uh, because of the nature of my job, I can't say who it was, but I got to meet some celebrities at work, which was a lot of fun. They were people that I grew up watching. So to meet them in person and how it happened was also a lot of fun. Like uh, they were at the front desk. I saw how busy they were uh, at the front. I didn't really look at who was in line. And so I was like, oh, I better go help out my team. So I pop up there. I'm logging in and I look up. And I see like the group of them. I'm like, oh my gosh. And nobody else is like, I mean, I'm not freaking out like visibly, but in my head, I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> and so, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Whoa, they're real. They're here. Ooh. <laughs> I get to, yeah, I, I got to, I got to check a couple of them in and help them off, help them out. You know, uh, I'll, I'll say a hint, like they're, they're comedic people. So referring to them as like, sir was very fun So you know, just treat them like regular guests. That's cool. And right after it happens, I go to the back and I'm like, guys, did you not see like that these people were here? And they're like, oh, they're here all the time. I'm like, and no one bothered to mention it. They mentioned like every other group. They mentioned like all the holiday parties and like the basketball teams and blah, blah, blah. But not the fact that we had like a group of celebrities staying. So That's it was wild. just, it was shocking. And the way it happened was like very organic, very fun. That's cool. And I caught them like later in the day as well. Like I wasn't like stalking them, but you know. Get... I just imagine you peeking around like hallways <laughs> in your hotel. Like, Ooh. yeah, you just see me like, over the desk <laughs> just being weird. But no. Uh, and then um, one of them ended up tipping me $20. That's and saying tight. Like, thanks, man. And <laughs> he was, you know, just really cool dude. So. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was I wish I could say who it was, but like I I don't think I can legally. Your your hotel jobs are so wild cuz even the last one you met people who I think are, would be really yeah. cool to me. I mean, well, these we are, can talk these about are, that now. Oh, we can. Oh, okay. Job. Yeah, Brooks and Dunn showed up <laughs> and you didn't know who these people were <laughs> I at didn't. all. I didn't you were like that cool were. guitar man, are you like in a band or something? You could say that. Yeah, dude, I <laughs> That's Well, I so met their wild. guitarist prior to You did, to that. you met their guitarist first. And I didn't, nobody told me there was a show going on. And I probably should have known. But I had, like, been off a few sure, days. Sure, yeah. And then, yeah, I met that guy. And I was like, oh, have fun, man. You know, treating him like, oh, yeah. You know, you, yeah. like, the same way we do a podcast. Yeah, yeah, you, know? yeah. <laughs> you play guitar, you right? You play guitar. And this guy's, like, a, a legitimate guitarist <laughs> yeah. playing at, like, the, the CHI set. You know? Oh, gosh, that's And then, so yeah, funny. they came in. And they were very clearly, like... I described them as affluent cowboys. Yeah, they were really dressing the part. They were really yeah. looking at yeah. I didn't think anything of it. God, it was so just, uh, you know. And then uh, they told me who it was, and I was still like, "Who?" <laughs> so that made it even funnier. That's but, wild that they said, "Yeah, it's Brooks and Dunn." You were like, "Yes, and." I'm sorry, I. That's not that's not my genre. Uh, but then when they like when they told me a few songs, like, "Oh yeah, I've heard them." I immediately called my dad and told him that story, and he was just laughing. So. It's pretty. It was pretty funny. Was I know I was in disbelief when that happened the first yeah, time. Yeah, I was like, like oh I know Calder's going to know dude. who these guys are. Uh, 
So yeah, no, it's it right good, on. man. It's uh, it's been fun to transition into that, and then just like hero clicks wise, uh, just getting some new stuff in the mail is always yeah. fun. Getting some stuff out to you guys is like my favorite part. Like having people win stuff. I like that we've been doing the live streams more frequently. I like that a lot so, too. That's been a really lot of fun. Maybe you guys have seen me there, but uh, yeah, I mean. Hero Clicks is rolling. I'm excited for January. It's just been after kind of the dead season. It's been it's been good to get back in the flow of things. So yeah. I think that's what's making me happy is I'm finally getting my my brain back on track to be like excited for what's next in Hero Clicks. You know, that's where I've been too. Just the the idea of looking forward to next phase. The idea yeah. of like more events happening. Even though like so, I played in the Chafee Clicks qualifier pretty small event but it was like mm-hmm. still really fun to try to build competitively to go up to sioux falls that was and, like, fun and it like, was hard yeah it was <laughs> geez, it was hard um and then all that work was just like the night before i was oh, i'm just gonna play whatever this version of the team yeah. was that's <laughs> funny was, it's like, like fine it's like i on that live stream it's like we presented one idea i'm like so what do you think of this cable bill it's like oh we could change it we tried for like an hour and then it's like i'm just gonna play that. i'm just gonna play it yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really getting excited for Hero Clicks. I'm really getting excited for Shameless Plug Guys, the end of the year Clixies Award Show, Ooh. which is going to be happening in ten days. It's going to be the thirtieth. Wow! So yeah. it's the twentieth right now. It's thirtieth, but you actually only have five more days to get your votes in. We're going to end the polls on December twenty fifth on Christmas. So the day after Christmas, the twenty sixth, they're going to be closed. We're going to be tallying everything up to be ready that coming Saturday for the Clixies. So. There's a link in the podcast description below right now. While you're on your phone, you can fill out the Google form if you've already done it. Thank you. But you mentioned giving away hero clicks earlier. Yes. You can win an Apocalypse in Genesis grand prize, you guys, and just for so filling this out. Other stuff. That is true. Stuff we haven't even mentioned yet is mm-hmm. going to be given away. We're currently at 199 people that have filled wow. out the form. Um, my goal was 200. Looks like we're going to beat that. I would love to say let's shoot for 300, but you know what? Let's just try to get as many more as we possibly can. I would love 300, though, because I know way more than 200 people listen to this podcast. So if all of you guys right now that are listening to this podcast... At least 205. At least 205. (laughs) At least 205. (laughs) So if everybody that's listening right now went and filled that out, we would get another 100, 200-ish people that haven't already done it to do it again. That'd be great. Share it with your friends. Share it with your playgroup. Because the only way to secure you know, a figure that you want to win figure of the year, whether that be like prime Spider-Man Pegasus cap camo, whatever is to vote for it. And to have other people also encourage them to vote for set of the year, all that stuff. So click. This form. data is also going to be public. Oh, this data is so cool. So you guys are going to love this data. It's I so think tight. The more that you contribute to that guys, the more exciting that that data becomes seeing like a nuanced opinion of what is the best and what is the favorite I think that makes for a really, really fun way to kind of look back on the year. And when you make that all public, you know, there's probably going to be some people arguing over the variances. And uh, who knows? Maybe it could be helpful data. So I think so. Depending on the player you are, too. Like, you know, some people might vote in favor of meta. Some people might just vote because their favorite character got made. Yeah. This year, like, for example, for, like, the top 10 list, it's like I had five Batman in my top 10 list. <laughs> And I could have had more, but I was like, ah, I got to peel back. So, you know, there's my bias showing through. It's like, I just love Batman. So to kind of get that to balance out across all the listeners, all the voters would be a lot of fun. And I also just want to add December 30th, it is 7 p.m. Central Standard Time that we'll be going live. We're going to be giving stuff away. We're going to be announcing stuff for the IPF. We're going to be giving away stuff for the IPF. And we're going to be opening donations that night as well. So it will be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of stuff to announce. We have a ton in the works, guys. I wish we could talk about that, but not yet. It's going to be a very exciting night. Some would call it a Hollywood night <laughs> for sure. It's uh, it's going to be a fancy camera. night. Make sure you uh, dress up for it, even if you're going to watch the live stream. I would say I would encourage anybody that wants to to do a watch party because it's a ton of fun, I personally think. Uh, we're going to have a grand time. So that's going to be, that's right, December 30th, next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, where on YouTube channel at Dial H for Hero Clicks at YouTube.com. So be sure to check that out. So really quick before we move on to the rest of the show, I'm going to do super fast what made me happy. Oh, yeah, of um, course. Yeah, might as well. So I, my little brother put me on this game called Blood West. 
Um, many people have like messaged me about it already, seeing my Steam name pop up for it. I've put in a cool like twenty hours since playing on Sunday. Yeah, uh, it's so fun. Getting into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, re- I'm really getting into it, man. So you are in the old Wild Wild West. It's very Red Dead Undead Redemption. That I kind can of get behind that. Something like that. So there's a curse on the land. People come back to life as zombies or weird other creatures. There's these little notes you can find that tell you about different enemy types. They're written like some guys trying to, you know, archaeologically figure everything out. He's trying to map it, whatever, you know. He's trying to figure out what's happening. Every mission you go on, you go find a cursed item to try to figure, to lessen the curse of evil on the land, right? And each cursed item has a fun backstory that you get to learn. A fun backstory in like a very dark horror game. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. So it's just been so fun. You yourself are someone that has died and someone tried to do a ritual on you. So that way you would actually die and pass on to the next world instead of become a zombie. Instead, you still have your soul. Like you still are a free thinking. You're whatever. like Constantine. Human. You're basically, you're Constantine, but your body's dying. So you oh. are, in essence, like a zombie in body, but you still have a soul versus being a mindless creature is kind of like what the game is saying. So it's really cool. Uh, the like native guy that does it, he was like, I failed. I, I messed up. Because you were supposed to die. You were supposed to actually die and then not come back to life. So he's like, well, he calls you cursed one the entire time, basically. And that's another fun mechanic is every time you die, you get cursed. So you slowly start to lose your humanity every time you have to die and respawn and he has to bring you back to life. So oh. the only way to get rid of curse, there's all sorts of different game mechanics, but so it's like deaths actually like they matter. really matter. They're punishing. Yeah, right? they're super okay. punishing in that game. So you have to play super carefully and stealthily. I'm not a stealth gamer. Uh, not either. I saw first person shooting double barrel shotgun. I instantly thought Doom. Uh, and I got I got clapped several times with that mindset. It's very much a throw rocks one enemy at a time (laughs) hit him with the axe you know um but by the end of the first chapter you do feel like doom you're running gunning you're like bam bam you know double shot and it feels really good just started the second chapter tonight um and even though i have all my same guns and all the money that i used to have now all the prices of everything have gone up for trading and everything we're in a new map a new location new enemies and it's back to oh man i'm made out of paper oh no (laughs) Uh, because these enemies are terrifying you got so good at like headshotting early on because you had to otherwise your bullets did like no damage Mm. and now all these enemies have like iron masks and all this other stuff and it's like okay come on game devs what are you doing so it's a ton of fun i love the game it's currently on sale it's a steep 17 dollars right now on steam but like not bad when was this game made uh like so it looks like it came out in like 2005. I saw you playing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks super old. It came out like two years ago and okay. it was releasing chapter at a time. And the third and final chapter was finally released like two weeks ago or a month ago, nice. something like that. But it's a ton of fun for anybody that likes environmental storytelling that kind of likes horror shooter, sneaky games, or just like a really good single player experience. Highly recommend it. I've been playing it nonstop. And I just super, I super enjoy it. So that's Blood West on Steam. Graphics don't define a game, you know. I don't graphics, think so. Yeah, I, there's so many. Like we were playing that. Uh, what was that rogue like? Oh, called? Uh, Streets, yeah. of rogue. Streets of Rogue. <sighs> yeah. So fun. Oh my god. That, gosh, that game cost us a dollar. Yeah. Shout out to that game. If you have some buddies, queue up that. It's a lot of fun. I don't know if it's still on sale, but probably not. Might be but, winter sale. I don't know. Yeah, but look out for it. If that ever goes on sale, it's just like an over the top, like you know. 16 bit 32 bit yeah game. It's i'm not low. sure sorry but it's fun it flows yeah. super fun dude it's great hours of play Jeez. my steam year in review came back and that game was on there but it was like your playtime june no other time. yeah <laughs> it was like so funny we we've revisited a couple times oh, have you oh nice yeah, i want we tried to get you to play but you were you were out oh, i was like i'll go knock cold. on his door and yeah you're just out nice um but as far as like the stealthy gamer stuff goes to I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3 again because it's the best game ever. Yeah. I won't waste everyone's time here. Obviously, if you're listening, (laughs) you know it's the best game ever. But I'm playing a rogue right now, and it's very much the same thing where it's like you have to sneak around. Like a lot of the time when your party is getting in combat, because I'm playing with a few other friends, you have to find – you kind of have to circle the combat Mm -hmm. and like take somebody out, stay out of combat, take somebody out. So it's like so much more precision, and it's like I have to stick with this for – you know, like days worth of gameplay. And I'm just like, oh, I might just have to respec and play something else. You're just not enjoying that. Like the sneaky class is well, not it's, for you. It's fun. I'm just not very good at it. Oh, sure. Because I'm used to playing, you know, I played a warlock on my first playthrough, which was literally just zap. zap. <laughs> <laughs> I 
magic beam, brr, <laughs> fireball. Yeah. And my brother's a paladin, so he's just going in, just bashing. slash, slash, yeah. yeah, smite, smite, just bashing Dude. people's heads in. It's awesome. You need to play it. The I, well, I mean, we have the technology now. Need, we have the technology. Calder does have a desktop. Yeah, now. it's yeah. We have something that won't burn up and start itself on fire <laughs> if it tries to run. <laughs> Baldur's Gate. But 3. if you guys. Yeah, if you guys have heard about Baldur's Gate 3 and you're unsure yeah. of if you should try it, if you like storytelling at all, if you like D&D in the slightest or at least like what goes around it, like seriously. I can't imagine our listeners would like board games at all. I know, I know right? It, no, there's no way. You guys have to give this a try. It's I honestly like I haven't played very many video games in the last like 5 6 years and Baldur's Gate 3 has just sucked me right back into like yeah. I want a game like all the time now. That's man. awesome. So, anyways, I, maybe we should talk about Hero Let's Clicks. talk about Hero Clicks. So, we're going to open up with the Champion Clicks Open in Sioux Falls that I went to this last weekend. We So, first off, it was a great time getting back to Sioux Falls, playing at Rainbow Comics, cards and collect or sports cards and collectibles. They have such a long name. Rainbow Comics is what I always yeah, I, just call I it. I always just call it Rainbow. Yeah. But it's great to be back. I played Friday night, and I played that Dracula team from the video you guys saw. Uh, just came out this week on YouTube. That was really fun. Oddly enough, did kind of well against some meta teams. Going two and one is like kind of funny. So like I super Flex. enjoyed it. Uh, one of the wins was a buy because we got absolutely stomped oh. our first game. So not really, but yeah. One and one with the buy, but it was a ton of fun. We beat Tristan. We beat Tristan a total of three times this weekend, by the way. One practice Calling game. Calling you out. It's, yeah, sorry, <laughs> Tristan. Uh, so that was a ton of fun. Then just to hang out with the fellas, and then just the next day, you know, I was going to wake up and play more Hero Clicks. So that vlog video is going to come out soon whenever I feel like editing it. But the two finals matches are up right now on YouTube. And then I have, I want to say, two or three more games already recorded that I'm going to upload later, and then those will also be uploaded. Those are my Swiss games. So we had eight players. It was three rounds cut to top four, uh, which is just a little different. But for how few players we had, I honestly kind of liked it. Being done at like 4 o'clock, it's kind of cool. That's nice, yeah. Yeah. So really quickly, let's go from a last. We'll go last to first. Let's try to find... I want to say probably... I don't even know if they're in any particular order after first, so... Really quickly, what did I play? Uh, I played a Camo build that me and Ian alluded to earlier. So it was Camo. There you go. Perfect. Uh, it was Camo at 110. We had Hound at 50. This is an animal theme team, by the way. Hound at 50. Double Pegasus Captain Americas. One had Shot Gauntlets. The other had Bucky's Arm. We had both Scott Porters. White shirt with Sinestro ring. And that was it. A little six-man team. Yeah. You know, feels low. Which is crazy. A six-man team oh, a few years ago is like nothing. You know, it's, it's, it's like really insane funny. amounts. But now a six-man team, when I'm used to playing like ten figures, it's kind of it seems really low. So and then my entire sideline is massive evil. So there's Black Skull, Dark Phoenix, King Killmonger, Kid Thanos, Ghost Goblin, Iron Inquisitor. Only two are missing are like Doom and Thor. Uh, no tarot cards were run, so I do want to say for anybody that doesn't really like tarot cards or is thinking, oh, if I play competitively, I have to play with tarot cards. That's not true. I pretty much – I didn't go undefeated the entire day. I did lose to the my last-round opponent in Swiss. I lost to Alex Mater in Swiss and then beat him in the finals. So there's some learning curve stuff that can happen, but you don't need tarot cards to win or have a good time. My maps were also kind of meme maps. I just really like Fear Itself, so I brought Bronxton, Oklahoma, and Blitzkrieg, Manhattan. And then the only map I thought could be useful was Council of Red, and which was the only map oh, I never sure. yeah. never went to because anytime I thought I would go to that, I was like, oh, yeah, I have flight. I ignore elevated terrain. Camo ignores elevated terrain for movement. This will be a great map for me. They had, like, Carnage Surfer, and I'm like, there's no reason for me to yeah. take you to a map with more elevated. That's just useless. So that was my team. I will say, quick rundown of the team. I almost never was able to get White Shirt up meaningfully because Captain America can't hypersonic carry him. Camo can't carry him. Oh, so sure. not being able to have White Shirt Porter in the thick of it to scare them with a pulse wave really sucked. And also not having him there to pulse wave easily was also kind of a bummer. There are ways to like TK with Black Shirt Scott, sidestep White Scott, or even like use Phoenix, I guess, to move him to get a pretty far reach with him. I just never did it. So like that was one thing. Um, it's a lot of action economy. It's a lot it. of action economy it's a cool to make trick. him to get off. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, because Scott Porter has every keyword, uh, the Dark Phoenix chase from Avengers 60th can trigger her free movements for brutes or free attacks, I suppose. 
So you could do like a three move and then a sidestep with Scott Porter. If you perplex, you can obviously move more and you can position for a pulse wave. On small maps, it's doable, but this is two actions. You are swapping into Dark Phoenix and then taking an action. So it's also a liability. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But I think what's really funny about this team is like the second Camo came out, I was like, okay, I really like this figure. Yeah. And then when we got him, I started really building with him. And this was the first team I built with him. Literally built it in two minutes. I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, Captain America's good. Two of him. Master of course. Evil, that's good. We yeah. can play that. Sure. Scott Porter's, those are good. I was like, oh, team done. The only difference was that uh, Camo had Warlock, but we'll probably go into it a bit later on why having Leaving Camo unequipped, unequipped. Yeah. That might be kind of the the argument for Camo, but... I mean, let's let's have Calder talk about his games before we talk about, I guess, kind of team specifics. Yeah, we can. Unless you want to get into that. I'm cool. If we want to talk about team specifics, about just building it, because right now we're just going over my build. So okay, before sure. we get into games, we can absolutely get into yeah, team let's, specifics. Yeah, let's talk some specifics then. I, I, think... I honestly, I, I knew I wanted to have both Captain Americas to be able to deal four damage at some, yeah. like, right, like right away. So one with knockback, one with Bucky's arm. That was huge. Honestly, leaving Camo unequipped, I think that was more your call than mine at all. I was just well, like, it, it boiled down. You got no to, points. That's, that's yeah. like, that's where I went. I was it was like, either equip camo or equip both caps. And we were yeah. both like equip the caps Yeah, because yeah, damage output bonus stats are really nice. I mean, no perplexes caps a 13 for four with Bucky's arm. That's insane. so good. You don't get defense. There powers. are so many plus one. This is beside the fact, but there are so many plus ones in hero clicks right yes. now between the Scott Porters. I'm like, Woof, so many modifiers where it's so easy to get so high. Avengers and Scott Porters is like, man, there's stat mods up the wazoo. It, it feels but yeah, very caps, much like we're back in the Fear Itself era. Dude, yeah. Everyone has plus, plus two, two attack, attack and charge. Yeah. Like, oh my god, Because people are just going in, fighting, and oh, it's yeah. like plus one for my Scott. Like there was one point in a match where you had where they're like, yeah, I have 14 attack. And you're like, how? You're like, I, he's like, I perplexed it. And you're like, and? I have range combat expert and Scott. Oh. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like oh. That makes for a 14. Yeah. It's like, wow, that was really easy to really, do. Really, really easy. Yep. And it's just, it's kind of wild. They're like, whoa, so, 14, that's a high number. No, it's not really. <laughs> not, not really. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And it, I think it makes Jennifer Kale. The legacy card yeah. that much more valuable, but that's a side point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do love this team though. The stat mods on it are also just insane. Printed um, five on camo. Printed five on camo. I do. I love that. Believe and then he, that is. He runs up definition of baller. <laughs> <He's> baller. <laughs> he picks up some elevated piece that I had. I was rocking three different elevated pieces, all with plus two attack base or plus two damage. So he was hitting for seven, <sighs> triple targeting a Ooh. crowd, hitting for seven. Ooh. It's so gnarly. Uh, I ran into, and you were right. We talked about this beforehand when building this team. Is anyone going to play Captain America in Sioux Falls? We were no. like, no. And sure enough, there was no. one guy who wasn't oh. from Sioux Falls, but he was playing Captain America. Um, yeah, shout out Eric. He made the drive from Rapid City, which is insane. What a G, what a guy. But yeah, no one really in Sioux Falls was playing Captain America. Instead, probably what I saw a lot was Double Surfer. Played against Kevin, who was running a Kama, basically the same Kama build. Instead of Captain America as an Equips, he was running Double Surfer, is all. So, and then Alex Mater, same thing. He was running his Prime Spidey team, Double Surfer. Having to play Double Surfer three times in a day is not no, fun. No, he he only had one. Oh, he only had one? Because um, he had Venom Thanos. That's what it was. It was Venom Thanos was his other, like, thing. But still, he had a Surfer, which, you know, pain in the butt. Just some quick philosophy on the Double Surfer. I heard yeah. this from Joe Alves, who is a very experienced okay. player. I really enjoy talking with him. He's one of my favorite in the community. But I asked him, I was like, so what's your opinion on like one or two surfers? Because people are going back and forth. He never played two. And he his theory on it was like, well, I don't like having two surfers because if my opponent has an answer to one, now they have an answer to like twice as much or if yeah. you're playing three, three times as much. So if you have a bad matchup, it's that much worse. And I'm just, I've kind of applied that to my own thinking where it's like, okay, you know, the saying of like too much of a good thing is maybe a bad thing. Okay. If you apply that philosophy to your building, it might kind of open up uh, different build paths and just different lines of thinking. So I've always thought that that was kind of interesting. And so I've started to find myself more in like the one surfer camp. Hmm. Because if you have things that can get around shape change or super senses, I mean, they can fall pretty easily. They are six clicks. But that's like, That's been my biggest struggle with them is that they're six clicks. And the entire yeah. time I'm just like, dude, this guy lives way too long for his mm -hmm. offensive output and his easy to heal -ness. 
He's nuts. Him having just six clicks off rip is horrible. And then he, not even mentioning healing up to his 175 point line is just too easy. Too Dude. easy to do. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah. So I've enjoyed having Kamo unequipped personally, uh, running into a ton of different Masters of Evil throughout the day. It seemed against my team, the best option was to go into King Killmonger. That was what I did most of the time as well, was getting into King Killmonger mode. Um, so I think having a good answer to that, being someone who is unequipped, feels mm-hmm. pretty good. Feels yeah, pretty good. Definitely. Uh, probably, again, the smartest thing being if you're going to run Camo unequipped, make sure you don't accidentally target somebody who is also equipped. So he's got triple bolt. It gets really easy to be like, Oh, no, wait, he can target whoever he wants. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, just make sure you're careful with the targeting things with King, King, King Killmonger in general. Camo, not so much. Run up and bash, dude. It's been fun. It seriously has been. So yeah. he gets four squares place. So number one, the shark goes 16 squares. Uh, <laughs> it can move. Yeah, let's let's break it down. Yeah, so he has, just has a shark that he makes every single turn. It dies typically all the time. Uh, he gets to just make it. It itself can move out eight squares, right? And then he has free move a bystander up to eight squares or move it up to its speed value mm-hmm. if it has dolphin make an attack. So it's a 16 square constant reach, full map reach on a small map. It's a zero liability, yeah. full map reach punch that can also break barriers so it can open up for the rest of your team. If it charges, it can break barrier. It can't, it can't, it can't do it with its free. Oh, it, no, yeah, no, 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 it can't no, do it with its free It's not caps attack. close. Yeah. Yeah. I should, yeah. Thank you for but specifying. It, yeah, no, absolutely, that. no worries. And so when it when you're dealing with like a zero point mechanic that is just constantly in your opponent, that's why I love Camo so much. Is that it just instantly pressures who you're playing against. It's like I can send this shark at you all day, and I don't care. Like you have to do something. And then on the turns where I'm doing something, I'm going in with Camo. The shark is going in too. Yeah. It can be so brutal, and both of those are unequipped, so it's really solid against Moe. But what's really nice about Camo being unequipped, as opposed to a lot of people playing him with the Hell Cycle, I, that is another thing. It, it does hurt his reach. I will it say does that's hurt his very reach. true. So on bigger maps, you can struggle a bit. But what's nice is having that dual threat. So right now on Moe, your two staples are King Killmonger, who gives you a rollout against equipped characters, and then Iron Inquisitor, who gives you Mastermind to all adjacent characters and reduce penetrating impervious. So. What that means is with my Captain America, who's equipped, if you switch into Iron Inquisitor, you don't he's get Mastermind. Yeah, he's done. You don't get Pen Imperf, so he's useless. If you switch into King Killmonger, he's just impervious. Here comes the King Shark, the biggest baller, <laughs> the baddest of the bad, and he's going to hit you for seven damage. Now King Killmonger's just dead, like off rip. So you have a dual threat against probably the most common engine for defense and just... I mean, one of the most common meta staple pieces. So I love that combo. Yes, there are good equipments on Camo, and I'm not going to say don't equip Camo, but I really, the more I talk about it, the more I thought about that just on paper, I really, really like having him unequipped. I think it's really yeah. cool. And his reach is already solid. His reach is so good. And I move him up like five squares on a big map. Now the shark can just go sixteen. It's in your opponent's That's, that's actually area. what I ended up doing in my first game against Alex, which obviously I lost, but still I ended up doing that. I'm like, you know, I feel pretty confident just leaving Camo hanging out here, even with Prime Spidey, even with Surfers. I'm like, it's like yeah, go come ahead. Get me yeah. For my triple rollout yeah. stop clicks. Honestly, yeah, please try good to good luck. Try with to... my Scott Porter re-roll. Exactly. Too. Yeah, with my Scott Porter re-roll with my MOE, my Captain Americas in white shirt Scott, just like right there on the starting line. Like, yeah. I'm ready to move go. up. Attack Camo. Do it. <laughs> I got eight speed hypersonic. No defense powers. Do it. Attack him. I dare you. Oh, so man. that was just a fun team. And I honestly, it was funny that I didn't even practice it the night before and then still won no. in the tournament. I, I think it's hilarious because <laughs> honestly, my first game, I was like, oh, I got to learn how to play this team. I got to, I got to, it's pretty point and click. Yeah. It, it, it really is pretty point and click, but there are some like nuances to try to figure out, I think with every team. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it was a ton of fun. My first, is there anything else we want to say about like team building? I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. I, I will say it was a struggle for me to play match. I've never played Mash of Evil before as well. That was probably the biggest it's learning hard. curve it's really difficult it's really hard um, there were some decisions i'm sure weren't correct that i made throughout the day but you can't ever play a perfect game of hero clicks i don't think no. ever let alone a perfect day here that's Clicks. a figure or figure set 
that you definitely need to get reps. I with. feel like that's a high skill ceiling. I mean, like on paper, I'm like, yeah, they do this and he does this and that happens, you know, but there was definitely probably some nuances I was missing, but still they're They are also just so good that dude. even if you don't fully know how to capitalize each switch, they're still strong. Yeah. You know, they're such strong pieces, you know? So that's kind were, of my experience with them so far. I, won't I lie. also haven't played them that I won't much. Lie. They're a little fun to play. Dude, I, so can't, fun. I can't. <laughs> I was so dogging on them the entire time because I'm like, rabble, rabble, rabble. They cost an arm and a leg, which they do. They they do. Um, and I was good like, reason for it. I, I don't want to play these. They are so cheap. They're too good. Yeah, they are pretty fun though. Having in the answer to just about everything in your back pocket is pretty nice. They're fun. They're great just skulls. Such They're utility. Really cool characters. They are. They are dope to look at. That's I probably mean, been my fun. My most favorite thing was like, oh wow, I am. I'm now. I'm the scumbag playing Massive Evil at a tournament. You're not a scumbag. Not re- no, not really. No, but you're not a scumbag. I mean, when you go to a competitive event. You have to bring competitive pieces. That is true. And that's just the nature of it. So I don't think you're like a scumbag for doing it. And that you know, was a little harsh. That was a little harsh. We there's were, plenty yeah, of people yeah. who enjoy playing that way. I know it's not necessarily our cup of tea. I mean, I do like playing that way. I, I like do, trying You, you know me. I don't like playing the cheesy cheese stuff. I like trying to counter mm-hmm. the cheese. But, you know, a little charcuterie board at Captain hey, America. Hey, we're not Camo playing and, Carnage Surfer. You that know? is true. Yeah, ugh. That's a piece. That's a figure that him I, and Prime Spidey will never. I'll never. Play you just those. won't touch those. I'll not touch those. I pieces. like Prime Spider Man, Carnage Silver Surfer. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't. I mean, I guess if I owned one, I'd probably play it, but I just don't. And if I owned one, I'd sell one. Yeah. If, I, if I owned one, I would be an owner of it for a very little amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I at some point, probably post rotation, I'll look to pick one up just because it's such a historically meta piece. You are big on that. I like uh, I like owning those figures. So, um, but the the Masters of Evil. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, Luke, like when we first got them, Luke played them in the States event, and he had played like three games with them. <laughs> and so after each game, he go like you know it'd be like yeah you know I played well, but I switched into like Ghost Goblin and he just got destroyed, or like you know I switched into like Kid Thanos and he just got lit up. So it takes some time to like learn like the value and the risk associated with swapping into certain things. I was definitely scared. The so first time I switched into like Ghost Goblin, games, dude, you know? I was like, oh, it's like I'm just two ESD. good bundles for some pen energy explosion, but he's going to die. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> like, that was just such a worry the entire time. But Big obviously, it, it, well, well, it is, it is, yeah. What you make up for in offense, you lack in defense. It's classic glass cannon type they behavior. Really, like, I know, I know they're expensive. I know they're hard to get, but man, they, they really are just straight up some of the coolest pieces. They are so fun. I, I and love the fact them. that I already own Black Skull, I was like, oh, I shouldn't. Maybe <laughs> I should. I shouldn't. I like still want to play I the team with. of like I tried this against Luke, and I'm not. I'm not even gonna like sugarcoat it. It was like miserable to try and fig- <laughs> to try and figure this out. But I played a team of six Masters of Evil, uh, and I had like the rest of them on the sideline, and so I was just swapping them in and out and in and out oh six gosh. times a turn to try to map out a turn with this character can be like eight different people, dude. That's props so confusing, to the people man. who were playing those teams at Worlds. Like a guy uh, won Mexico Nats with a, it was five MOE chases, uh, Mephisto, and some equipment. Props to that guy for like piloting that team well, because like you look at it and you go, oh, that's fun. And then you try to play it, and you go, this is like... That's like a headache, man. Solving you... like five Rubik's Cubes at once. <laughs> like, Dude, it's hard. Kind of. I ain't even going to lie. Uh, it's hard. So I'll Sorry. jump into... Uh... Sidetracked. Yeah, it's no worries. I'm going to jump into my first game here. Let me pull up... I'm trying to find Ethan's team. There it is. Old Ethan Jacobs. So he was running Phoenix Sentinel, who is scary. He's full map reach all on his own, on a small map. You know, So he's a little scary. He had double Carnage Surfer. Oh, geez. I played against Carnage Surfer so much that day. Oof. Don't know how I made it. It's Double Carnage Surfer. <laughs> Both had Symbios. He had Mad Jim. He had Space Ghost. Shot Gauntz on Space Ghost. Saint Walker. Blue Lantern Ring. And then I believe Watch- White Shirt Porter with the Sinestro Ring, of course. He had a uh, Cathon on someone as well, which is pretty cool. So probably the biggest thing in this game was where I was like, okay, well, if he's going to hit me right away with Phoenix Sentinel, um, and this is, I think, the only mistake he made. I mean, there are probably other mistakes made, but I would just say for like growing sake, was he used Mad Jim to equip Phoenix Sentinel with pumpkin bombs right away. Um, oh. And I, I personally think that was a mistake, because then I just switched into King Killmonger, 
He moved up Sentinel to be able to shoot everybody, which is well within Camo's reach, well within Captain America's reach, you know, all that stuff. And I made the King Killmonger roll, and he was like, okay. And then after that, it was like Phoenix Sentinel's down. And then it was just kind of a slog to get through the rest of it. But we were able to, like, chew through the rest of the team. Would, basically. His agree. dice also abandoned him. I will say this. He maybe hit, like, two attacks that entire game. Yeah, but I hate blaming dice, like but, that, like, man. A build low. like that with the Phoenix Sentinel, who is a, gl- like, a literal glass cannon. Yeah, dude. You have to hit when that When I first looked attack. at his card, I was like, that's yeah, it? Like, it's four clicks. That's it, bro? Four clicks? Oh, like Captain Think? America looking his Stop lips click. over there. Yeah. He was like, oh. <laughs> I was about to say, he's this got is delicious. big fork and knife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, here we go. But, uh, I mean, so he's, like, the odds on that are just horrible for him. Like, you have a 50-50 roll that you can re-roll. So, yeah. two 50-50 shots, that's, what, 75% chance that you succeed? And you're um, betting the house on that? I'd agree yeah. with you. I think that's a mistake. Yeah. But it is a cool team. I love the shenanigans that you can equip, you know, mad, you can use mad gym to equip people who can't normally. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The mechanics of it Phoenix are really Sentinel cool. Phoenix pumpkin bombs. And don't get me wrong. If that would hit. Yeah. That would hurt. Like but absolutely. the odds of that are so low. So low. That yeah. has to be a misplay. And the fact that he could have just triple targeted you too. And done. Yeah. That also in absurd. Been... Like he could have killed your caps. That's with also a triple true. target. Yeah. He could have probably killed your scots that's another time where i just realized man the caps have such great ironclad defense from range being a 21 at all times with black shirt porter on the team it's just oh. great yeah just I like even think about it's that. so yeah dude the caps have just high defense stats just in general and if they make the mistake of which happened a lot dealing them three damage and putting them on their cl- combat reflexes click then they're just constantly a 21 you know or a 20 dang, defense i guess yeah. they have a 17 but yeah it's like dang cool all right so that was my first game against Ethan. Uh, my second game was against Tristan Halverson. <laughs> uh, my third game of the weekend playing against Tristan. <laughs> he was running his Ghost Surfer, his triple Ghost Surfer team with Mad Jim, Blackheart, Double Scott Porters, and Green Lantern. Uh, Hell Cycle on one of the Ghost Surfers. He also put Motorcycle on one of the Ghost Surfers. He has Cathan on one of the Ghost Surfers. It's a cool team in theory. It's neat. Uh, he said in theory. It's a theory-based team. And I'm like, well, in theory, I don't think it's very based, if I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but yeah, the team lost to my Dracula team twice. I mean, that team has made a Kleenex. It, dude, well. it's paper, Three bro. Clicks those, of invul- those, those Ghost, ghost surfers, surfers, Captain America, and uh, Kamo were just like, again... Wow, such low clicks of life. Don't mind if I don't mind yeah. if I diddly diddly you, do. You don't have defense powers, even if you did. I even don't care. Even if you did, yeah, it's rough. I will say, shout out Tristan. He laminated his build sheet, <laughs> a build that he has, he's never going to play this ever again. But he laminated it. Maybe he will prove me wrong. I don't know. But you can see it in well, Sharpie. It's funny you say prove me wrong because that's exactly what I told him to do with this team. Because when the yeah. set came out. Him and uh, Ethan were both not the Ethan that Ethan you played Bri- against. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ethan Briggs. Ethan, yeah, Ethan docks him. Why don't you? Oh, <laughs> younger Ethan. <laughs> younger Ethan. He's got like five last names. It's fine. They, uh, they were both going. They were sending me build two, three, four, five ghost, ghost servers. Server? On. Oh, geez. five ghost like, servers. Some with multiple black hearts. Like if I can get across the board, and it's like ultimately you have like a ten attack, eleven attack, maybe yeah. twelve. And then you can't attack multiple times through the smoke. It is very cool for those of you who don't know. You can use Ghost Surfer to place smoke under people after a movement. And then you can have other Ghost Surfers attack through that smoke. Yeah, they can just sidestep in the back or whatever. I'm like, oh, wow, that is really strong. So you can kind of scarab people. But honestly, where I think Ghost Surfer falls in terms of like where I think he will see playability, you play one with Cathan and with a Hell Cycle. So now he's 11 for four. He can trigger like three or four movements with hypersonic sidestep and he gets a hypersonic attack. Okay. Like, I think you just look to get value out of one rather than base your whole team around it. So while I like this team and I like that Tristan played it, I did not have a lot of faith in it going into it. I'll be honest, Tristan. But I did tell him, I was like, yeah, you know, I want you to Go prove me wrong. It. I own two ghost surfers. Like, I'm, I'd be happy for you to do well, you know, <laughs> investments. <laughs> it's still, it's still a cool team. I it still, is. I still kind of dig it. I do dig the idea of being able to like send one Yolo, one Ghost Surfer out. Scare then you can just of the side others, step. Yeah, yeah, scare of the others. It is cool. Um, it's just getting around barrier and all this other stuff. It's it's hard for this team to do, Dude, it and it's just it's just not able to do that as effectively. Um, my stop sign. So it stopped basically every single game we played. And he went, huh? Uh, 
Hmm. I gotta listen to this. That stinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he's listening to this right now, he's like, "Well, um, actually, caller, um, if you remember, I missed it only by a four. And if you, if I would have hit, if I would rolled an eight instead, <laughs> or sorry, Tristan, enough clowning yeah. on Tristan. We love the guy. And then, uh, yeah, he no, lamin- it's, it's laminated cool his build dude. shoes. Yeah. So funny, dude. Laminated it was, swag. It was, it was like. He was making that little wobble, wobble, wobble noise. It's hilarious, dude. <laughs> he even, like, changed some of it with Sharpie on the build sheet, you can see, which is so funny. He had Lucas sign it in Sharpie and everything, too, which is hilarious. So he can, you know, just kind of erase that with uh, change some alcohol team or in whatever. Between matches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hidden laminated tech. Uh, my next game was against Alex Mater. This was, uh, he put me on a big map. It was just a tough, really tough game. Which map? He put me on... Was it Chemical Spill? Is that what it's called? That was that Avengers um, Forever map. I think it's called like Chemical Spill, Chemical Plant. It's that... It yeah, Chemical makes Plant. It makes like a T yeah. of Elevated with that green whatever stuff around there. It's just a good map for Prime Spider-Man. I hate playing against Prime Spider-Man. I moved up Camo a little bit. And then actually he made a decent cluster, which I was like, okay. Well, I can't attack with everybody else. Getting the caps are a little too slow for my liking. I do wish they had a little bit more speed. I, I constantly found myself being like, man, I wish they had a 10 hypersonic, nine hypersonic, something, you know? And I was like, son of a gun. They just don't. They, the eight speed is, is killing me. The no TK is really probably the worst part is the no TK um, for the double base pieces. But being able to have like Camo just run up and bash was great. So Camo, I don't even remember this game super well, thankfully. Blocked it from my memory. It, it'll be uploaded later. But Camo <laughs> goes in, he does big swings, he triple targets a bunch of people. I think he makes a kill somewhere in there. I can't remember what it was, but that Venom Thanos being able to give out prob to his entire team if he hits his leadership role is so good. It's cool, man. I think Venom Thanos, you were talking about underutilized figures or overlooked figures earlier. I don't think oh, Venom yeah. Thanos sees that much play at all. Um, it's hard, man, yeah. because he's 50 points. And what other symbiote man is 50 points who's also on a surfboard? And yeah. Well, that guy was also on the team. He, he played the symbiote team, too, which is actually kind of cool about Alex Mater. So his team was, I want to say it was Black Skull, it was Venom Thanos, Carnage Symbiote, we had Spider Man, and then Double Scott Porter. I want to say that was his entire team build. Mm-hmm. Um, the most interesting part of his build that I do want to highlight, yeah. and I would like an answer from him, but I haven't messaged him about it, admittedly. He had Black Skull equipped with the web shooters. Yeah, I didn't get that. I don't. So he paid points for those too. Yeah, it wasn't a free equip. I don't know what those were for. If I'm being honest, he never used it in any of our games, so it didn't come up. But I am mm-hmm. curious in what scenario. I want to know. For. Yeah, like what? Because obviously that's like a specific counter to yeah. something. So I want to know what the answer to that is because if you switch out, you instantly drop them. So I'm wondering is like, does he have it equipped to Black Skull to drop on purpose to then later maybe equip to Scott? That's what I would assume. Or Some type something of a, like equip that? to somebody else, yeah. I will I say don't know. another thing I have to just give props to Alex Mater quick for is I think he's the only player I've seen who consistently remembers to pick powers with Iron Inquisitor. Yep. He can pick powers from the KO zone. It's every single time he does it, and I'm just like, man, I never I don't think I picked powers with him like one time. Yeah. He has legitimate strategies around it where you KO the spotlight. Spotlight to give him sidestep. Give him sidestep. Yeah, yeah, that is really cool. That was another thing where when I finally played Iron Inquisitor, I was like, I swapped him. Oh, I got some stuff that's dead. I better make sure I choose powers. I didn't say it to him, but I was like, honestly, it's not even a strategy that he did. He just remembers to do it and he's good yeah. about it. I was like, I learned that from you, Alex. Well, and he's like, what do you mean learn from me? That's a power the figure has. But it's like, yeah, just forget about it so often. He it's already like, does so much. He does know? do so much, dude. It's perplexed to prob, to mastermind, to KO zone. It's like, whoa. It's got shield TA. Shield TA. It's all you know? sorts of, dude, it's so much stuff. That was nothing. Master and on top Beeble, of that, he's oh. switching into... To, again, <laughs> another yeah. thing that does oh, so much stuff. Yeah. So, so props to him for always yeah, remembering absolutely that. Absolutely props to Alex. And but yeah. Another, it was a tough game. Like the just to highlight the equipment again. Um, so not only is he dedicating fifty points to Venom Thanos, he's also dedicating fifteen points to a Hell Cycle. A hell Cycle on Venom for Venom Thanos. Thanos. Yeah, and it was actually somewhat impactful in your game. Had he hit the attack? Well, sorry, I'll, I'm getting, getting ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, no worries. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I would really like to just kind of hear more reasoning. What stage this team is at, like what tinkering he thinks he needs to make yeah. to it, if he does. Uh, but I really like it. I think yeah. it's a really solid uh, build, and it's a symbiote theme as well. It's not monster, yeah. so symbiote that is cool. That is Scott symbiote. Porter. <laughs> and then, so that was Swiss. I went two and one in that, and with how few people we had, that meant I was going to be able to play against Kevin Nelson in my very first whatever cut game so kevin was playing a super similar team to me he was playing just one scott porter i want to say looks like white shirt because that was free okay so he had black skull white shirt cop scott porter camo carnage surfer carnage surfer hell cycle on camo and then both symbiotes on both carnage surfers so in kevin's team here kevin's team's fully equipped except for black skull so he he was able to actually deal with my master build pretty well in this game but right away we go to a short map kevin puts us on a short map uh he moves up pretty substantially which was a really bold move on his part i do think there's a lot of misplays for both of us in this entire game um but that's hero clicks you know so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna after a long day of hero yeah especially after playing some clicks playing clicks the night before playing clicks that morning you know Hanging out, yeah, all that the stuff. The brain you know? goes to mush, it, man. It just, you know? it just kind of does. Especially you start going for the, the some would say big baller plays. The big baller plays, the oasis, the mirage of a big baller <laughs> play oasis. after a long day, and it's like, oh, it's the sand. But he ended up like moving up his team super, like super close right away. So I just went in charged with camo and a shark, and I don't, I just don't remember totally how this game goes, but I'm able to delete, I want to say I'm able to delete one Karn Surfer and deal a lot of damage to another one, and I actually didn't deal, like, any damage to camo, and that was probably a mistake. I think I realized, I should have realized how much tempo camo grants. I also should have got rid of his King Killmonger, so that was another thing I probably could have changed was maybe moving around the team to get to King Killmonger. It's not easy. Camo can't fly. Camo does ignore characters. It's not easy to do it's a lot of wasted squares to try to do something like that but he's he had the reach um so that was another few things that i probably could have done differently but i think at this point in the day i was so tired of playing against carnage silver surfer that i just (laughs) wanted to if i said if i could at least kill one of them i only have to worry about one instead of two i think that was my biggest thing this was for you carnage surfer four and five yeah on the day four and five of the day six and seven were the next game which is mind-numbing yeah like in that game, you know, like in a camo v camo matchup, it is really, and then especially when they have two Carnage Surfers and the MOE, yeah. it's really hard to like make proper target selection. And then, you know, with what you're saying, like getting to the spot where it's good to make those attacks. I mean, we talked about it before the tournament where it was like, if somebody else is playing two Captain Americas, Camo's just going to get deleted. Camo gets deleted, yeah. And then you play that against a camo and camo. Like, you were just like, I hate Carnage Silver Surfer too much. I hate him more. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. I was like, nah, I hate Carnage they Silver Surfer way too much. Yeah. yeah. Started seeing so red. That game, <laughs> literally, yeah. <laughs> that game kind of just became a big slog fest. And I would say, I think Kevin was beating me on tempo for a good while later in that game. And it wasn't until, literally, I'm so absent minded when it comes to tarot cards. I never think about them, even when they benefit me, because I just kind of don't know what they do, honestly. I'm yeah, the guy, majority of them, I'm like, uh, now what's that? You know, a lot of people are like, yeah, man, Five of Pentacles is up. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> staring at the card, got to pick it up and flip it over when everybody else has probably been like, oh, yeah, sure. That's one of 20 most commonly played tarot cards. Of course I know what it does. Uh, and I really don't. So it was like a reroll blades and this shark blades roll on Camo. I rerolled it. It was a two. I rerolled it into a six. And then that just... Yeah, so when it came down Oof. to just his camo versus my camo and a shark, my camo was hurt way more. And then eventually we were able to out-tempo him thanks to that big blades roll. Thanks to Kevin. And honestly, just shout out thanks to Kevin for reminding me that I could even do that. That is another thing where it's like you were a good, honest player. And even though probably made Kevin lose the game, okay. And again, guys, don't. this is not me trying to sound or whatever. It's a game of hero clicks. I think what's more important is being a good, honest player and just overall a good person, reminding your opponent, hey, you have this reroll. Hey, you can do this. Or, hey, just so you know, if you're going to do that, I have shape change or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just ultimately sportsmanship is the most important thing of the day. Um, And, you know, that boils down to, like, don't play the game of, like, gotcha clicks. Yeah, don't play gotcha. That's just not I've seen that. Especially like with like things like plasticity where it's like, oh, you said you were going to move here. You have to stop. 
That's not, yeah, it's so, that's super not cool. I'm like, oh, well, then I probably wouldn't have moved there if I knew you had plasticity. Well, you did, so stop. Yeah. And I'm like, I would just stare at you like, dude, are you serious? So, like, playing yeah. for an advantage that you know your opponent, like, wouldn't have done. Like, playing along the lines of, like, well, you made the mistake. And, like, my rule has always pretty much been, like, if dice have been rolled, we can't go back. Yeah. You know? So I'm sorry if, if if you made a mistake, if dice have been rolled, like the game state has changed. And now your decision making is altered because you know you've missed that. That you is also true, it. yeah. But anything prior to that, like if somebody, you know, messes up a TK or a perplex or they want to change the order of it, or they carry and they place their figures and they're like, ah, oh, maybe I'll switch it up. <laughs> the amount of times I've carried my figures and been like, oh, those two are next. Yeah, they they were they would have perplexed before I moved. Yeah. If nothing it's else so has times. happened, it's like, yeah, dude, go yeah, for it. Sure. Like, yeah, sure. As long as cares. you're not going to like completely devour the clock doing it, yeah. totally fine. Yeah. So if game state hasn't changed, I mean, yeah, just promote that line of play, guys. Play with integrity. Play with honesty. And, you know, just don't play a game where after a win it's like, oh, you know, thank God I played that way. Right. You yeah. Know, thank God I won on that technicality that I pointed out. Like, it doesn't that feel, doesn't feel good. doesn't feel good, yeah. And so, it doesn't promote good play either. So. So. Big shout out. I think Kevin deserves fellowship award for Off that. Off the pedestal. Just, yeah, no worries. No worries. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So, yeah, the game against Kevin was a tough one. It was, again, just kind of a slog fest. He was able to switch into Black Skull, which is probably the best counter for King Killmonger. Unequip Black Skull, double exploit flurry. You're out of there. He hurts. Yeah, dude, he really hurts. I'm actually a little bummed. I never switched into Black Skull like once in the entire cool. day. It just never, like, the opportunity in my mind at least never really arose. But, yeah, that's just He's what happened. He's defensive, too. He's double he rollout. So really quick, actually, just to mention the top four. So it was Kevin and I, and then Alex Mater versus Isaac Denke were playing. So it's so funny that me and Kevin both had Camo Prime teams. Isaac and Alex both had Spider-Man Prime teams and ended up playing against each other. So really quick, since we were in the top four and we ran down Alex's team, ran down my team and Kevin's team, we're going to shout out really quickly Isaac's team before I get into my last uh, This one's game crazy. Here. It is crazy. So Isaac's a big fan of old Spider-Man Prime and Blue Marvel specifically, so he's been running them constantly. So he's got Spider-Man Prime, he's got Black Symbiote on him, he's got the 10-point Avenger 60 Iron Man. What is that? No, no, it's it's the common Iron oh. Man with TK. Oh, it. I do remember this. Yeah, so he's got that guy with the red symbiote on him. He has the Wheels of Vengeance motorcycle blade, Blue Marvel, and then he's got Scott Porter with the Sinestro ring for free, and then a... 40 point what is this 40 no, point 25 60. point it's the oh. super rare spider-man from super spider why does it man it looks like 40 okay it's no, that's the points. set number that oh my you're looking gosh at. i'm so used to seeing <laughs> oh geez goodness gracious okay. what's cool about this though is a lot of people you know are big on the legacy hulk with cap wolf yeah and he legacy was playing him with blade instead so this is a more economic way to get that hulk out it's less of an investment blade does die easier but this is an avengers theme that is pretty interesting and yeah, this is also something, you know, Isaac's been playing around with for like the better part of a year now. Like pretty much since Beyond Amazing's come out, he's been playing that Spider-Man Prime and Blue Marvel. And so Blade at his lower line, he's, uh, what is he, a charge piece? He's a charge piece. With prob. Yep. So if you get the ability to pop out your pilot, right? Well, actually, no, he doesn't have that. He doesn't it's, have that at all, no. Huh. So I guess Blade it's ignores, if you want to kill Blade. Uh, he ignores characters. He's got two targets. He's prob. He has a special Blade's Claws Fangs. When he makes a close attack, after he's going to deal one pen damage to each opposing character adjacent to the hit target. So it's kind of got a little splash. Interesting. I suppose the thinking might be, like, yes, Blade is an easy KO, but what comes with him? Is, yeah, Hulk's hard to gonna deal mess with? you up. I guess that's the idea, huh? So it's like if you want to kill Blade, you have to commit more to doing it. So he might kind of skirt by. But that is uh It's interesting. Yeah, the blade choice still know. kind of perplexes me a little bit. I, I mean honestly, common I Iron Man is like So that one is neat, and he kind of explained it to me, but that Iron Man does give everybody with Avengers precision strike. Oh okay. but man, wasting 50, what is he, 60 points or something? Yeah, 60, 60 points. points on this guy. I get it. He's sidestep TK barrier leadership. Okay. That's really cool for like 30 points. Um, yeah. You know? I mean, that's the truth. If I'm being honest. And then he has precision strike and he gives everybody with Avengers precision strike. 
I guess the the question is, is Precision Strike really worth it? He did get top four in an event. He did uh, lose to Alex Mater in top four, so I don't remember where he lines up. I think fourth place, technically, but I don't know. Maybe he really enjoyed giving Precision Strike. I mean, I do... That Iron Man's neat, but man, the starting with Barrier, this being 60 points of your team build to give everyone Precision I'm, Strike. And I'm I get not it. sold Aside, on it. I mean, Sidestep TK's fine. I think he's this team's leadership, too. No, Blue Marvel has leadership, but... Yeah, I honestly, um, I don't know. I don't know, Isaac. I, I. That's a hundred twenty points of me like raising my eyebrow, but honestly, I know, right? I kind of like seeing teams like that. So it is, it is unique. But Blade, it's just so. I'm just so curious about the Blade and this Iron Man. But you're right. It's hundred twenty points of me being like, hmm, interesting. Why? I mean, Blade to me, I look at that and I just think like that's a trap card figure right there. That's a, oh, like, you killed Blade? Congratulations. Here's my 12 for 6 hole. I guess he doesn't feel good to have on the map either, a charge Blades. No, he's a problem. So, you. yeah, I guess he's not doing as much as he could for a 60-point piece no. in this world. But, he yeah. might get away with it because your opponent might see that and go, I can't dedicate a whole turn to killing and I guess, Blade. I guess and Blade would out. have shape change as well from Hulk, I suppose. Yeah. Still... Yeah, yeah, I'm man. not sold on it, but I think it's cool. If it I'd is be like interested a, to see what his like you killed Blade overall I strategy is. Flip over my trap card. Which yeah. is <laughs> I was Hulk legacy the whole Hulk. Time. Yeah, I was Hulk the whole time. Hulk was riding on the back of my motorcycle. Yeah, dude. This he whole takes time. off a little the glasses and the trench coat. It's like, <laughs> oh, I'm Hulk. Oh, Blade, what happened? Uh, Gives you so a yeah. smirk and then like camera zooms out. He's Hulk. <laughs> yeah, and he's just massive. Um. So then, yeah, I had one last game against Alex. He decided to take me to the Atlantis throne room. He was like, yeah, well, you can't kill your Keep shark. Keep your shark alive. Keep my shark alive, which watching that game, I know is painful for you and a few other people to watch. There's so many times I could have killed my shark it actually was. on that map. Um, and I'm so used to thinking of Atlantis. I was thinking too much in a thematic way and like how it would really be in the in the real world. If we were underwater, <laughs> everything would be water. I'm so used to the real shark world. I'm so world. used to the real shark world. <laughs> but in the hero clicks world, if there's printed hindering terrain or blocking gets destroyed, that's not water terrain. Even though the map is underwater, that doesn't become water terrain. It is now just it's just clear hindering terrain or it's just hindering terrain. So that would have been a place where I could have actually killed my shark to then use him next turn or all of the elevated that I put well, on the map I think, would have also uh, worked. The situations where that came up, the shark ended up dying anyway. I think so, for the I, most part. I know for one of them that was the case. I, I don't remember another time that you could have, so um, I'm not sure about that, man. But, yeah, that's definitely something you have to think about with Camo. Yeah. But I could easily find myself in the same mindset of, like, oh, my shark gets to be in the water now. That was That's all I could think. It's really yeah. funny. That's really the, all like, I could think. What might have, I mean, maybe it was supposed to be a drawback of the design of, like, the shark's on land so it dies. Ends up making Camo like, ten times better. Makes him, like, super strong. It's kind of funny. We're like, yeah, that's a drawback. So Your shark dies. But it's like, I just make one next turn. What do you mean? This is awesome. This if you're rocks. on the other team, you know, like, some guy's, like, reading the newspaper, looking out the window, and just seeing these sharks jump out of the water. Flying past him. Oh, there's another one, honey. <laughs> <laughs> another beach shark. So, I told Alex, and this is the mindset I went in with this tournament the entire time. I'm not playing at the Champion Clicks Open. I don't need to qualify for the Champion Clicks Open. Dial H is going to do coverage of it. So We are? We are. Yeah, Ian, we are. So if you are doing, you know, you can't go to the Champion Clicks Open either. You have to stay at home. Didn't work out. Whatever. We can stay up to date by following us on Dial H at Facebook.com and on Dial H Fear Clicks on YouTube. You'll be able to see constant updates placements, gameplay, live interviews, check-ins, stuff like that, videos throughout the day. It'll be a ton of fun. You'll see a ton of stuff like that on all of our pages, so you're not going to miss a beat, even if you're not able to make it to the Champion Clicks Open. That being said, I'm not playing in the Champion Clicks Open, so I had well, no dog in the race. Well. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. I'm, I'm, maybe. Well, Maybe a little. Maybe we might. Yeah, maybe we, we might, might. We might make a little surprise. We might do a little surprise, but I'm not going to play in 300 modern at the yeah, Champion Clicks. We're not open, playing in which, 300 which modern, which is no. yeah. We'll be honest. We'll say that I'm not playing 300 modern. So I wasn't really. I would I assume this qualification or whatever. I still am kind of foggy, honestly, 
David about what the prize was for the Champion Clicks Open qualifier. I don't know if it was like a first round buy or if it was free entry into the 300 mod. I don't really know. Um, I assume it was like a first round buy type of deal. But anyways, I wasn't going to be able to use it because I'm not going to play in 300 modern with Champion Clicks Open. So my mindset was I'm just going to have a fun day and I'm going to try to play the best I can because ultimately I want to grow as a player. And this is what I told Alex in going into our last game. I was like, Alex, you know, you're a really good player. You're a national champion. A lot of respect. Hats off to you there. Um, I already played a game against you today. Part of me is like, kind of don't want to play <laughs> against double or one Carnage Surfer and then Sp Prime Spider-Man again. But I said, I'm going to still try to play what I think is the best game I can play. I'm still going to try to give you a, a decent run for your money is my goal. And he's like, okay. <laughs> you know, so yeah. that was my mindset going into it. If I lost, wasn't going to mean anything to me because I'd be like, okay, you know, whatever. You know, no, uh, whatever, no water no, off my back. No, you can't fault yourself for exactly. losing to a great player. Exactly. So Just pick up I was some like, things where it's like, oh, you I'm going to play that. against a good player, so I'm going to try to play my best to try to make us both better players. That was my mindset, and I guess so iron sharpens iron. It was yeah, yeah, real iron sharpens iron mindset, and so we went into it. And man, it was a tough game. Or is it steel sharpens? Steel? It's iron sharpens iron. It is. Yeah. So Does it was steel iron sharpens sharpen steel. Does I'll... anything sharpen anything? I. I guess iron, so, you know, as one man sharpens another, plastic iron sharpens, sharpens iron. Plastic. Does plastic sharpen plastic? <laughs> wood sharpens wood. <laughs> Maybe to a point. Maybe to like a point, like a pencil. Like literally a point, yeah. Wood but friction. Can, a friction, yeah. Wood sharpens wood and starts a fire. Whoa. Philosophy. <laughs> getting philosophical. And that was the match. We're getting philosophical in the <laughs> Dial H studio at midnight right now. Yeah, sorry, uh. guys. <laughs> I apologize for that one, but that was an honest question. That's true. That was yeah, fair. That I was mean, pretty. I mean, yeah, yeah. I suppose friction would prevent a lot of things from sharpening, and Basically. it just blows up. Yeah. So maybe yeah. so funny. Sharpen wisely. Sharpen wisely, lady. Dang, look at all these. Look at these that, are some yeah. good. That's a good little snippet. Live, live by these things. You exactly. Know? Yeah, guys. If you're not getting philosophical advice from your Hero Clicks podcast, <laughs> I don't know. You can get Play so camo? much. And yeah, live, man, live sharp. A shark that dies can come again, but a <laughs> shark that lives, dude, that that camo, a camo mirror match with Kevin, shark, sharp, and shark, shark, sharp, and shark. <laughs> oh gosh, just throwing dead shark uh, bodies at each other. <laughs> Sorry, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, so, last game, last game, last game against Alex. I moved up a little bit. I just accepted the fact that he's probably going to be able to hit me with Spider-Man. Yeah. I wasn't going to be a nerd. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I wasn't <laughs> going to count out the squares to figure it out. I was just going to be like, he can probably hit me. Um, I wasn't going to count out the squares for Carnage Surfer either. I was like, okay, he can probably hit me. So I just kind of moved up my team into what I think was a decent enough defensive position. Um, and then, sure enough, he probably gets like the best tarot card because I dealt him this twice in that game where I shuffled or he shuffled. I was like, oh, okay, I'll split it. And I gave him the Emperor each time when I would split it. Uh, not the Emperor. Which one's the one that makes you big? I think it is Emperor. I think it's Emperor. I don't, I don't know Either the way, names of the them. Either way, it's the big one. It's the one that makes you choose one Colossal figure. So he was able to make Spider-Man Colossal and just null void a lot of my barrier that I just made. Which, which hurt in two ways, and here's why. One is not only he wasn't he was able to save his super strength instead of removing a barrier he was able to put the elevated under King Killmonger which sucks. Oh, yeah. So that was like the biggest thing was because he just had giant reach. And, and the reason that's giant. important, everybody, is because oh, yeah. if you put King Killmonger under elevated, he's no longer adjacent to your team, so he can't use the trait to make it so he can reroll yeah. against equipped characters. So he's essentially just nullifying the whole point of that figure yeah. because of that, which hurts a lot. I forget. So he sends out Carnage Surfer, Venom Thanos, and Spider-Man all come my way. And I want to say after that first volley, I'm missing White Shirt Porter and one Captain America. And I think that's yeah. it. Everything else is he still took alive. Out, so what happened is he took out your... Uh, my stop your sign first. Stop sign to yep. heal Carnage Surfer 1. So I think Venom Thanos killed that. He pulled up with Carnage Surfer. He killed your shark. Damaged yes. Scott. I think. And so Carnage Server healed again. And then Prime Spider Man came in, finished White Shirt Scott Porter, and now Carnage Surfer is top dial. So for those of you who don't know what that looks like, he is a thirteen for five from range who can make two attacks, who does penetrating damage. With Scott, he's a fourteen for five. 
and he's just full move hypersonicking, shooting through elevated. It's brutal. It's really, really brutal, especially when you factor in that he's 50 points. So right off the bat, Alex might not have crippled Calder's team as much as he wanted to, but Carnage Surfer is now devastating, and he is going to be a problem for the rest of the game. So I know Calder. I'm that's. I mean, that's yeah. exactly how I felt. I was like, man, there was there was two decisions. I guess I had to make in my next turn, and my goal was to get rid of as much, just like a chess game, just like any hero host game. Get rid of as much fodder, get as much pieces off the board as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, number one, he's got nine clicks of life now. He has shape change. Yeah. He's got super sense of some Invincible. of those clicks. Invincible. And I'm like, I just admitted to myself, like, you know what? We're going to try to tank as many Carnage Surfer shots as we can because <laughs> I'm not going to kill him this turn. Instead, I'm pretty happy with it. I got decently lucky. I made some good placement, made some good calls, and we were able to kill both Prime Spider-Man and Venom Thanos. My next turn, it's crazy that that happens, and I'm still like, Okay, that's all I can I'm do. Scared. I hope that's enough. <laughs> you know, taking Prime Spidey and then another really good attacker off his board, but he still is. And that's where the Emperor also kind of got you again. That actually, that one actually helped me because it let Camo have Giant Reach three. That was probably the best. But um, you, so you went in with Cap, and you were, yeah. Your oh, you're goal right. This was did to get hit me. it with hit my him for goal four. was 100 percent to hit him for four damage with knockback, and I I specifically ask, hey, can I choose what square I attack? through with a double base piece the answer is yes so i could try to get the angle to hit him against this blocking terrain and the reason it's important to hit him for four as opposed to three is because on click four he loses his defense ability he just has super senses yep so now that can be outwitted now he doesn't have the additional rollout of impervious so hitting him for four as opposed to three is pretty big time and and so i line i line all this up and then yeah and i'm like okay and you take four damage and i just hear no and I'm like, what do you mean, no? I, I, I hate hearing that. <laughs> that was you, your reaction. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was like, huh? Explain explain your work. Show me the math. And it's like, he has Emperor. And I'm like, wow. I did, yeah, Tarot bit me in the butt yet again. And I was like, sure enough. I can, yep, smaller base, dude. I cannot knock you back. Mm-hmm. So that was tough, but we were able to still pull it out with all these senses rolls uh, with the camo. Camo being able to double target. And then I want to say... Somebody else had to finish off Thanos. Oh yeah, kid. I had kid yeah, Thanos you switched kill into Thanos. Kid Thanos. That was another weird switch, and I don't blame people for thinking that was weird. But in my mind, Thanos still had super senses, and, and you got a prob from it. And I had a prob, so I was like, okay, well, kid Thanos is an eleven for three. All I need stop is stop click too. Yeah. So all I need to do is deal one damage, and I would like to have as my only reroll left on the turn. So I'm like, all right, and then it worked. I needed yeah. it because he missed the first attack and he hit the second one with the prob. So. Ended up working. So that was like, yeah, three different attacks to kill two pieces. Um, and I was still like, man, I'm scared. Yeah. Uh, it's really tough. And so, the next turn, that Carnage Surfer lit up your cap. Yep. Lit up your Kid Thanos, KO'd both, and damaged Camo. Yep. A 50-point piece. Yeah. Just 50-point piece is now massacred. a... Massacre. A 50-point piece that heals three clicks and is a 175-point piece. And hurts. Even then, hurts a lot. Your strategy after that was still like, don't care. Can't. Exactly. Still <laughs> ignore him. And I'm like, okay, now we just get rid of his Scott Porters and we get rid of his MOE. I instantly was just like, okay, <laughs> on to the next thing. Uh, so ignoring, yeah, ignoring Carnage Silver Surfer yeah. worked. It, it ended up working in the end because after all of that, once I killed the rest of his team, I was like, oh, well, now it's it's Camo mono versus Carnage mono. Surfer. And I have just... Ironically, I somehow make more attacks than you, uh, which is great. Actually, I make the same number I have. No, I make three. And if you hit me to my stop, it's like you have to hit me through triple rollouts. He had well double rollouts. He double he rollouts. He damage. does have pen damage the entire time. The entire which is dial, so sick. yeah. Yeah, so that hurts. It hurts a lot, but we were able to outtempo him there at the end. We made some good plays to be able to get rid of his massive of evil swap and get rid of his Scott Porter and everything. The shark is just ah, such a great utility. Dude. Even though I it's, never killed it's the my shark, my favorite mechanic man, in it was Hero awesome. right now. He's so fun, dude. Legitimately, my favorite thing. Like I'm I already, a big believer in Genesis, dude. From X of Swords. Yeah, I know. Like, bystanders are already so fun. I already love bystanders. Mm-hmm. You just made them way more fun in a totally different way, and I yeah. love the shark for it. But yeah, Genesis, you're right. Is another just bystander spam piece, dude. I I like. I know Legacy Apoc is like hit or miss for some people, but bystander generation is so fun. And I think Camo is like the king of it. And on top of he that, he wears the like, crown, bro. If you pull up on Camo, he is going to bash you for like what six, seven damage. A lot. 
It's going to hurt. Plus the super strength knockback. I don't think I rolled blades with Camo once the entire day, if I'm being honest. Uh, I just never oh, no, did. I'm, sorry, not Genesis. Annihilation. Oh, Annihilation. Oh, that's I right. I don't know why I, I said that. I agreed with you, but I knew you meant who you meant. Yeah. Annihilation. Like I pictured her in my mind. Yeah. And I, that's a piece I've always tried to make work, but like the action economy for it never made sense fully. It was always hard to actualize that piece. Camo, it is so much easier. And if you play the two together, you can move those so easy. other bystanders so for free. Yeah. Ooh, that is true. Yeah, you just so, got to move them for free. And if Annihilation dies, Camo can now spawn daemons and sharks. So that's a combo that for that's, y'all at home. It's kind of fun. Start actually. brewing with that. Yeah, like, it might kinda, be kind of fun because Annihilation's that. easy to kill. Dude. Oh yeah, super easy to kill. But yeah, that was a that was a good game, and uh, I mean, you know, a lot of it as from the spectator point of view, from somebody who watched it while he was yeah. at work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex, if he would have hit like one more attack on his opener, like with the prime Spider-Man. Yeah. You could have been in a lot worse of a situation. That's true. If Venom Thanos would have hit two. And then it also like, uh, he missed both rollouts on the prime Spidey. Like that could have been the nail in the coffin. <laughs> that was huge. Yeah. There were a few bailouts, but then, you know, there's also a few bailouts for him as well. Like he hit some key shape changes on the carnage surfer, a few super sense rolls as well here and there. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's kind of pointless to beat into that because you're rolling dice. Dice, yeah, dice. They're just dice, happen. but yeah, absolutely, big swings and theoretics of our favor. go out the door when they're rolling. You know, like it's like, <laughs> oh well, theoretically, I should, I should not die. Oh, okay, I missed all five of my rollouts. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I mean, but it's part of the game. It's part of why Captain America is good. Is you can remove things like that. So that is true. Yeah. You also have to think about that. But I mean, now we're just. Ugh, I know. Sorry. Another thing. A um, great tournament. It was a great tournament. Uh, really quickly, this is another thing I told Ian Like after I got back. I didn't roll super senses on Bucky's arm once that entire day. <laughs> Completely forgot about it. Uh, Bucky's arm, six on super senses. Also, you forgot about Scott Porter's super senses. I also forgot about Scott Porter's <laughs> super senses. That is also very true. But once again, the, the spectator angle, it's so much easier to like... <sighs> play from that right when you're not you're thinking actually about making specific the things rather than yeah, everything that's true so it's like it's easy to narrow thought and that's another thing with building it's so easy to say like oh the masters of evil do this yeah oh teams do that i mean we can like i'm i'm the theoretics guy that's like all i do for competitive play uh well i mean i play as much as i can but you know what i mean like i spend so much more time doing that but actually playing it's like i am nowhere near the people who consistently play yeah. so i think a lot of people uh, should realize that the difference between those things, especially after playing all day and the day before, is so, so, so massive. I'm not, like, calling anyone out for that. No, I didn't, I, didn't of, think, I didn't think you were. kind of sounds like I was, No, it's like, some people need to realize. There is a lot of stuff like that, and sometimes I dig it because it, it is helpful to hear from an outside perspective. So a lot of comments we get on a ton of our gameplay videos are, like, usually of mistakes that happen in the game, whether that be accidental cheating or, hey, you could have done this. And I'm never going to dog on anybody for saying that, but I do just think the mindset of, you know, if you're, you're playing right. that game, it would be, number one, yeah, you're right. We did miss that, or, oh, that was a cheat, or this or that happened, or that would have been more optimal. And that happened pretty much after every game I played in top eight, usually, like, after after I, or top eight, top four, um, usually Lucas or somebody else would be like, hey, you know, you missed this, or, you know, we tell Kevin, like, ah, you probably should have done that, or we tell Alex, like, ah, you probably should have done that. You know, Alex, as soon as the game was over, he was like, did I make a mistake choosing a small map? And Lucas was like, yeah. yeah. It was kind of funny. And it's like, yes, honestly, he did. yeah, you really did. Like, He was worried you, so, but see, he's worried way too that's much the about pressure the came on. The pressure with the shark. And let's, uh, you know, let's put a bow on this. Yeah, I agree. The bow on this, guys, is that to all you camo haters... <laughs> To all you people who denied Camo, who said he wasn't the one, you were wrong. That's true. And you're going to continue to be proven wrong. Camo is the GOAT. Maybe not. but You heard it here first, folks. I think I think Camo is easily a top three prime right I'm, now. I'm super pro Camo. I'm high Number on Number one right is now. still Spider-Man. Sadly, like, yes. But I honestly think you could put Camo at number two, sure. and he's pretty close. The shark is no liability. It is a zero point thing that moves 16 and punches. And your opponent has to deal with that every turn until they kill him. Just so and good. killing him is not easy for anybody other than like Captain America. Yeah. Which surprisingly, I I mean, I'm curious to see how he's going to shape out in Florida. 
I'm going to say I don't think he's like that popular. You know, that's kind of the craziest thing about Captain America. And he's even when hard I to was mobilize. Him, he's really hard to mobilize. When you look at something for 10 points more, which is this thing is ridiculous. I'm just going to say Carnage Surfer. For let's just kind of say a similar thing, right? He has Pensai. He's ranged, probably getting through. It's not the same utility of getting through defense powers. But man, being able to move, make two attacks, have way more reach, and heal up to some see nutty stuff. Elevated, uh, yes, yeah, double elevated, rollouts, double is rollouts, huge. all that stuff. I can see why some people like how when Kevin had his team, he did double Carnage Surfer. I chose double Captain America. You know that different style and team building, but ultimately, kind of like the same role is filled. Yeah. So yeah, nice little bow. It was a fun event. Thanks to Lucas. Thanks to Rainbow for hosting it. And then, yeah, I can't wait to go to the Champion Clicks Open. Not to play it, but to just have a really fun time. I'm really excited to see what people bring out. Absolutely. But I think that's part of it. The point at hand about Captain America, I think you're right. Even though when we first saw him, we're like, whoa, no brainer. This dude's nuts. And now that we're kind of getting into it, people are being more realistic with it, building teams with it. He is tough to mobilize. He's a gr- he's an amazing piece, he's though. He's a great piece. Such a great but piece. But does he beat out in popularity similar pieces in his weight class? And that you're remains to be seen. fighting against Scott Porter. You're fighting against Carnage Surfer. Yeah. The only player I've really heard talk about Captain America, like, as much as we have been, is Azareth Strife. Oh, sure. Who was playing a team. Can't remember exactly what all was on it, but it was like Green Lantern, Batman, and then I believe three Captain Americas. Oh wow, that's so it's cool. really centered okay, around. Okay, I did. I like that. I can't that. remember what else was on the build, but he's the other person I've seen really vocal about it. There was another guy on Facebook who posted he won a 400 Bronze nice. Age tournament with an animal build that had Cap and Skybreaker, okay. which mad respect. That was I do a, like that was a sick build. Like and Skybreaker Legacy Squirrel Girl. Oh, Legacy Squirrel Girl. Dang. I wish I could remember your name, man. Fun. If you listen, please message us. Uh, let me give you proper credit. Yeah, but yeah, Camo. He's legit. He's legit, man. And the haters. Hope you're I ready mean, for two years of him. I think I think the biggest <laughs> point to make, too, is South Dakota is one of the toughest fields. in the, And that's, yeah. that, that comes from a little bit of bias because I've had to play there a bunch. But our national champion is there. You know, second place the nationals. second place nationals is also from there. Um, Isaac Denke, he got them. fourth in silver at Huntington's. There you go. And he's just been like the uh, raid boss of South Dakota for like two Lucas decades. Both and Alex were also highly placed top 32. I want to say both made top 16 in Worlds, maybe even Alex further. Mader was top eight. Was Lucas top was eight. top four. Lucas was top four. It's a hard, it's a tough freaking venue to play at, man. Let me tell you something, man. The, the, the kids that have grown up in the rainbow venue like ugh, they're hard to play against now it's like they're bane really man it's like yeah it's bane dude. growing up in the I prison up in the darkness <laughs> I was raised by the darkness i never played casually until i was, I was already raised a man. by the meta yeah exactly dude exactly it's just such a meta focused venue and the point i'm trying to make here is top four was what two primes each spider-man camo in a really tough and who field. came out on top and who came and once again who came out on top it was camo, camo got that dog in him <laughs> um, I'm going to shout out one last guy. Uh, Eric here, he drove a super far away to come and play. He drove across the state um, from Rapid City. So I just wanted to shout him out. I won't dox him too bad here. Sorry. Sorry, Eric. Um, but he was playing Clea Sorcerer Supreme. He was playing that Prime Brother Voodoo. He was playing. I like that. Yeah, dude. He was playing Captain America with Skybreaker as well. Jennifer Kale. A60 Spider Man at 25. Two Gun Kid at 20. Black Cat also love that. at 20. Warlock on Black Cat, and then Mary Jane, Spider-Man Beyond Amazing. A really cool team build. I think it's really fun. I think it's a really neat. I want to say this is, I think, just non-theme, but he team name was the Midgard Defenders. I kind of dig mm, that. Okay. So, yeah, cool team. Shout out for driving a long way, man. We super appreciate you coming, and it wasn't able to hang out too much at the event. But, seriously, super appreciate you coming down. That was awesome, man. We're coming east. And shout out for innovating with Brother yeah, Prime. Yeah, very innovative. Yeah, dude. I like it. I All think right. he's really interesting. One last shout out. Azure Strife, you also want a champion clicks open this weekend. There's also a few others that happened this past week. Shout out to those happening. I didn't see the results though. Nothing. Yeah, no, there's I no didn't either. champion clicks things up on Clicks Nexus right now. So Or HC units. Or HC sorry, yeah, HC units. So there's no goodness gracious. Wow. I figured knew how to use this website by now. Yeah, there's still no the latest event was 12-9. Yeah. So 
none of those events have happened yet on HC Unit, so we'll see. But we're going to go ahead and jump into some listener questions on the Discord. If you want to join the Discord, you can become a Patreon member. At a $5 tier, you get the behind the scenes. You get to see exclusive content that is not uploaded on YouTube for the public, the viewing public to see. That's behind the scenes videos, that's exclusive videos, fun voice clips, as well as just hanging out with us in the Discord. We're usually in the voice general every couple of nights of the week and if you just want to hang out pick our brains then you're more than welcome to join and just strike up a conversation and then yeah on discord this is where we have our listener questions ian you want to go ahead and read off our first listener question here yes it comes from tyler m he asks if you guys designed a monthly op kit for dc and marvel but could only use equipment what would you include okay so being an op kit is one new sculpt two reused sculpts right and then like a fun like a legacy card oh, legacy. Oh, or shoot. a um but he's saying but you could only use equipment only equipment so let's just say for this three equipment three equipment uh number one i would do for my first sculpt coming back i'm gonna do an asgardian theme for marvel i think that's like the easiest one to probably do um, oh sure so we're gonna do mjolnir i do think uh, oh like og hammer thor yeah Sure, we'll do OG Hammer <laughs> Thor. I think either Mjolnir would be good. Gold Mjolnir. But I think, I think both Mjolnirs could use a pretty solid rework, honestly. Yeah, I think I'm if they you. had a thing where they could only be equipped to a character named Thor or like 100 points or more. And if they weren't, you had to do a roll every turn Something to see like if that. you're worthy. See if they're worthy. Something like that. So versus like being a hard roll to pick up, like the Relic roll only on a six, maybe you would do a roll each turn to see if they can continue being worthy. I think it would be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun, man. So I think that one is number one. Number two, I gotta go Blood Axe because Blood Axe is just so sick. Yeah, I can um, see a nice I, remake. I, I, for I that. think there could be a pretty fun remake for the Blood Axe. Uh, it was just sort of mentioned in Thunderstrikes like dial, but he uses he like destroys his Thunderstrike mace to destroy the Blood yeah. Axe as well, which is like a really fun ability. Um, I think the Blood Axe being able to the fact that it kind of can possess people. More so than just like Scourge uses it, but like when Juggernaut had it, it was like, yo, Juggernaut with a Blood Axe, I'm cooked, you know? So I think there's a ton of fun things to do with the Blood Axe. Uh, and lastly, uh, just because I think this would be a one, like also fun piece of equipment, this would be my new equipment, right? So this is like the brand new, whatever, brand new sculpts never before seen. Uh, but Simeon is big on this like one story with Beta Ray Bill where. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. We're just going to do this straight up. I think double M16s. That's it. That's the equipment. That's the Asgardian <laughs> okay. equipment is like Dez it. and Troy for, uh, for Executioner yeah, again. Man. Why not? So, yeah, it's just double M16s, which I don't know. Maybe they give you Carnage Surfer, Flurry at Range. Or just, like, multiple. Maybe they give you just, like, multiple targets, Pensai or something, like, fun like that. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, even the, you know, the Civil War Punisher. He has the unload. I love empty that sculpt. Clipped. Yeah, dude. Yeah, where you just, like, you empty his ammo. Some ability like that. But that would be my Asgardian Marvel OP kit. If you want to do your Marvel or DC, I'm going to think uh, of a DC one. Yeah, quick. DC. The first thing I thought of when I read this was like what I want to see brought back. I'd love to see the Helmet of Fate back. I just, I mean, I love Dr. Fate. I think he's really cool. I think that could have a, a similar mechanic to the hammer where you're rolling to maybe like take it off instead. Ooh, where yeah. maybe if you have it on too long, you're starting to get punished like you're trapped in there. want to be right? free of it, yeah. Um, it's not really a theme so sorry uh another thing that i would love to see back <laughs> in the game is the bucket of water <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so funny that is man. pretty cool uh if we had to go along with a theme maybe like for like a jsa theme because I, I love the jsa sure. maybe like alan scott's like lantern because that's a little different Ooh. something like that okay and then for a new one once again, I'm just like listing off like DC equipment yeah. I'd like to see. It's hard to think of a, a themed equipment. I think if we were going to do that, I'd probably want to see the Black Lantern and White Lantern rings. A okay. lantern theme would be cool. But if we're just doing like things I want to see, I still want to see this. We got this kind of with the utility belt. We got the Kryptonite ring as an option. I would like to see the Kryptonite gloves get oh, made. Those would be so tight. And to make just like a brutal piece, you know, a brutal equipment for a close combat piece. I'm all for that. Kryptonite goes to be actually so dope. I think that's a lot of fun. I think a Kryptonite bullet type of deal where it's yeah. like a, uh, or like the Kryptonite gun or something, a gun that shoots mm -hmm. Kryptonite bullets. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, Which, man. again, I don't know how it's not just penetrating like a blast. Or like, that's like straight up, you can't use defense powers. That one, yeah, that one probably should be, you can't use defense powers. Oh, that'd like that. be bad, though. Yeah, we don't need that to be equipable on people. Probably not. No. Yeah. For Marvel, though, that's... 
man, that's really tough. Uh, gosh, I mean, you can just keep doing the gauntlet for me. I yeah, <laughs> I like Thanos. <laughs> I love the cosmic stuff in terms of that. Uh, but you know they did some like the shot gauntlets and the billy clubs and like Spider Man Beyond Amazing. Those are so fun. If you can give us some more like zany stuff like that, some goofy stuff, yeah. I'm all for that. I just I don't know what that would be. You know the Eye of Agamotto sure. would maybe be cool. Oh, That'd yeah. be a cool thing to have. They've done that before, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they have. Yeah. So maybe bring that back. Uh, the cosmic control rod was kind of crazy. Maybe bring that one back. So hard not to lose that piece, dude. The cosmic yeah, control rod. It's glued to my Annihilus. Because I'm like, I'm not playing with anybody else. He's just yeah. holding it constantly. <laughs> if I ever want to play it without him, like, here he is. I mean, it would be cool. You remember the Iron Man briefcase at all? Yeah, dude, that was tight. That was like Force Blast or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That was maybe, awesome. Maybe bring back some stuff like that, some portable armors. That could be a really Ooh, fun okay. equipment set. Uh, I would dig that. Yeah. So there's some loose answers for me. Sorry that I couldn't give you a more contingent theme tyler it's, okay. it's fine anyways how about you calder what's your Ooh, for dc, what's your DC? you you kind of started like the the jsa theme i think if you did like alan scott's lantern and then you did dr fate's helmet as a reprint um i couldn't think of any other jsa but like hawkman's mace would be kind of tight yeah right cool. i think it'd be like probably a pretty simple one i don't think it's it's inth metal i think that's the yeah. only like, special thing about it but um the old i would probably thing. i would probably really like and I know you're the Batman Mr. Terrific's guy. orbs. Like there, yeah. Oh, dude, that's what I've been dying for. I think like just a bat belt. Honestly, bring back some of the bat belt utility uh, stuff and just have that be new objects. So I would probably reprint Kryptonite Ring. That'd be like my, my biggest one. My the second disguise biggest kit. one. I was actually gonna say disguise kit. <laughs> really, it is so fun. Yeah, dude, I love. That I was one. thinking disguise kit. How it had the glasses and the nose on the skull. Yeah, dude, it's so, so funny. Good. Um, but you could do, I would probably make it just a super goofy. So I would go Batman Brave and the Bold theme. I would go Kryptonite Ring, and then I would go the Shark Repellent Spray that they made. Yeah. That would be really fun. That was another and really cool one. I man. would take one of two super popular items that Brave and the Bold Batman uses constantly, and that would be like the nth metal brass knuckles that he uses to punch Gentleman Ooh. Ghost, which are so tight. Yeah. Um, maybe some kind of bonus against someone that uses phasing or just something like that where like knockback or something. Or... He does this like five times in the show, but he takes off the bat belt, straightens it, and then he pulls out one. It's like a sword all of a sudden. Do you, you remember that episode? It's like in a few no. episodes, but yeah, I think like I the idea it. that like he can pull out the bat belt, straighten it, and pull out a sword somehow, I think is like so tight. Which I'm down with a bat would just be sword. some kind of like special blades claws fangs ability, but I think that'd be a fun new item to have. Yeah, man. And then I yeah, like it. the mystery could be like the mystery of like Dead Man or something. If you remember like that Batman Brave and the Bold episode. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, where Dead Man's trying to figure out, or maybe the. The one where they go back in time with like Arthur and Edward. Ooh, that'd be tight. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a fun one. I think it's like Faust who's behind. Faust is behind. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. (laughs) We're both like trying to think. I know Jason. Jason Blood's there. Involved in that. Merlin's involved. I think it's Faust. I think Faust. Faust isn't in that century though. Is it just like? Is he not? I thought Morgan Le Fay. I think it's just Morgan Le Fay. Is it? I think it's Morgan Mm. Le Fay. The crux of. Merlin is just and then the guy, the, the the guy, the knight guy is also there as well. Uh, is it, from the, is it not King Arthur? Is, is it, it King, King Arthur? Arthur? I think it is. Uh, I don't even know, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I it's can't a remember. Good show. Maybe it's the Black Knight or something as a villain as well in there. There's okay, like a well, dra- now, they fight a dragon for sure somewhere in there. Another right? another tangent. What yeah. is the name of that JLU uncommon who is like part of this Shining this, Knight? Shining Knight. Shining Knight. Gosh, that's all I was trying to remember. <laughs> so funny. It's like having that itch in your brain. Like, yeah, dude, it's just right there, it. right on the tip of my tongue. What is it? What could it be? Our next question comes from Bill. Okay. His own Bill, a classic. Last year's super fan, he won that at the Clixies. Guys, don't forget to watch December 30th, 7 p.m. CST. He asks, what are you guys planning on watching on the week leading up to Christmas? If this is answered post-Christmas, mm. what did you watch? For me, I plan on getting in Hawkeye, Guardians Christmas Special, Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Home Alone, Home Alone 2, and Christmas Vacation at minimum. At minimum? Extensive list, Bill. That's a big list, Bill. Are you big um, movie? I mean, we're both big movie watchers oh, for yeah. sure. Are you big in like rewatching stuff around the holidays? Uh, I'll probably watch Die Hard. Okay. Because uh, I'm in the camp that it is a Christmas movie. 
I'm with you there. I I think it's fun. The biggest argument I've had people against it is that a Christmas movie should make you shouldn't just take place during Christmas, but that it should feel like warm is like one that I've heard people say. And I'm like, nah, he yeah, says ho no. ho ho and all that stuff. It's a yeah. Christmas movie. Um, I like Die Hard. I like it a lot. I might rewatch that. Honestly, I might be there right there with you. I have. Um, my family doesn't like this. I usually try to trick them into watching the Star Wars holiday special that was made forever ago. <laughs> I bought on DVD oh, some no. whatever version of it. Yeah, <laughs> so I own a physical copy of that Star Wars holiday special. Um, and, I've, and I've made them watch it, I think, twice so far. And every time, it's so awkward and painful to get through the Star Wars holiday special, but I love it. It's just so bad. It's good. Um, and then it's Jingle tough. All the Way. Jingle All the Way is my go-to. It's my favorite Christmas movie. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm probably going to try to get in at least jingle all the way. Yeah. Die hard. And then maybe try to make them watch the holiday special. I, I don't necessarily know if I have like Christmas movies I watch around Christmas, yeah. but usually when I'm with my family, like we're all pretty into movies. So yeah. we'll find some, some stuff to watch. Like last year we watched seven psychopaths. Which <laughs> okay. It's a fantastic movie. Okay. We had never seen it. We all liked it. So, I mean, we're more so along that line, Just whatever. Um, for Christmas movies that I like watch consistently, honestly, like it's not Christmas, but it is like you know around the season, like yeah. the Eight Crazy Nights with Adam oh, Sandler. I mean, yeah, I think that counts. Dude, I, I, you so, like that movie? Every year I watch that as a Do kid, really? like multiple times, dude. I love that, that is movie. So funny, dude. That was like the funniest movie to me growing up. And then when I found out it was like Adam Sandler, because I didn't know, you know, I'm like a little kid. I was like, that's even better, you know. So that's probably like my favorite that's Christmas unreal, movie. Ian, that's unreal. Dude, I remember going to Hollywood Christmas. Video. Hon- it's a Hanukkah the- movie. It's one of two yeah, Hanukkah movies. I know. And it's like. I don't even want to call it. A, like, it's not a Christmas it is, movie. It's a Hanukkah movie. Yeah. I know, but it's around the time of <laughs> I year. guess so. That's the, that's my favorite <laughs> Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie, dude. That's so funny. I'm not even kidding. Every year we'd go and rent that from Hollywood Video. Are you serious kid. right yeah. now? Oh my god. Didn't own it for whatever reason. I remember the first time I watched that movie, and that's when I realized Adam Sandler was Jewish. Oh that's, really? Yeah. I was like, oh, well, I guess you wouldn't celebrate Christmas. Okay, cool. But yeah, dude, I that movie. I did when I first saw that movie as a kid. I thought it was hilarious. As far as I know, not actually, well, I know better, but. It's a Christmas it's movie a, for okay. me. Okay, <laughs> uh, and I mean that in a I way of s- like it gets me in. the Yeah, season, I know what you, you mean. Know. The seasonal mood. Probably the toughest struggle I have is fighting my mom and my sister for the TV to not watch another forgettable Hallmark movie of. I can't do that's those, dude. Man. That's painful. Can't do we, those. So like last year, we were looking for a Christmas movie, and they were like, it was called A Christmas Night. Night spelled with a K. Oh no! Yeah, dude. Ian, you want to guess? <laughs> Before we get too much on a tangent, the plot of this movie is exactly... I'm a single woman who's looking for love around Christmas, and I don't know, there's just no guy for me. Oh, hey, there's this mistletoe so, hanging so here. Do you wanna, <laughs> so the way they get to a like night... Close? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It hit, it hit literally every trope. So the only thing is you, you clearly forgot that there was some magical spell that happened in the 15th century that somehow teleported oh. a knight. Yeah, yes, 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 Ian. So this guy's chivalrous. This is an act, yeah, he's chivalrous. <laughs> and obviously he's like... Chivalrous. He's like, whatever you would call it, he's like lean jacked. So he's like very male model-esque looking, of course. So within the first 10 minutes of the movie, the knight is in present day Utah or wherever they are. The girl is talking about how she's visiting her hometown for Christmas. So we're like, boom, love interest is introduced. A girl from the big city is coming back to her small town. Amazing. Uh, she not only runs into the night, she spills hot cocoa on him. Of course, a little meat. Gotta have our meat, meat cute, right? And then he has her publicly executed her <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be at so the funny. castle. And <laughs> she, she takes him back to her house. Takes off his shirt to clean off the hot chocolate. We see him shirtless. Yeah, dude. This is all in the span of like 10, 15 minutes. Like right in the beginning of the movie. She's obviously, of course, like a first grade teacher or whatever she is. Because that's the only occupation. She can either be a big businesswoman or a first grade teacher. That's what a Hallmark movie is. It's It's literally just trope after trope. But like... It's like Hallmark pitch meeting. What is it? It's the exact same movie, but he's a knight. So what do you do for a living? I slay dragons. I, yeah, dude. It's literally <laughs> some stuff like that. Oh, stop it. And it 
You're it so is, zany. It is such a fun movie to like make fun of the entire time. But it's like, this is real. People made this. Someone wrote this script, yeah. which is the same script we've seen 80 times. But it's like, yeah, but he's a knight. I have in a our friend time, who got cast in like seven Hallmark movies. And he said, he's like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the vibe on set. Like, even the people who make these, a they lot know. of the time are just like, we know what this is. That sounds right. fun, though. I'd still do it. I love that a Christmas Night. A Christmas you might have night. to watch that one, huh? <laughs> oh, jeez. If you want to. It's, so, fun to make, it's fun to make fun of Hallmark movies, especially when they're really ridiculous. You know, another side tangent is I'm just, I truly am like an enjoyer of bad media. I really like, I like things. It. I dig it. But the, my favorite bad media is bad media that's like trying to be good. Okay. So it's like, it's like something where nobody stopped and said like, are we really making this? Yes, we're making this. No one ever bothered to go, okay, hold on guys. Seeing the stuff that like made it to the finish line and it's like, yep, this is, we're putting it out there. Here it is. Like it's, it's not trying to be bad. It's taking itself very seriously. That's the stuff. It's a where it's weird just like, concept like to grab, but maybe the listener will understand. But I really enjoy a movie that's bad that thinks it's good over a movie that thinks it's good but it's bad. Yes, if you know it, yes, yep, exactly. exactly. Yep. Yeah, dude. Yes, like a hundred percent. Yes, my brother even comments on. He's like, "You are the person." who enjoys that like the most out of anyone I know. And he's like, I don't understand it. I was like, I guess I don't really huh. either, but I, I just love it. You do. It's the best of the best. All right. Luke, Luke, Luke asks, we've solved for the split mechanic for the equip dance and for pilots. How would you update and fix battlefield promotions? Oh, I see what he's saying. Okay. I mean, isn't we've that tarot into, cards? I think that is tarot cards. Is I think tarot if cards are... If you want to label that a fix. I mean, honestly, a modern, I'm not a huge fan of either. A so. modern reimagining of, probably, honestly, I think it would just be tarot cards. I think feats are basically equipments, in a way, without yeah, the prerequisite. Very you much know? so. So, yeah, I think you're probably right. That's probably I mean, just the I battlefield I played in the condition. era of battlefields, and a lot of would the time... Would that be map bonuses? Not really. Somewhat. So the, the I think the difference between tarot cards and battlefield conditions is like I played Batman teams. There was a feat called Deep Shadows, which made it so no one could shoot outside of six range back when that was like Dang. somewhat short. Yeah. So basically the whole map's hindering terrain and you're playing a Batman team. So it's like if you don't have ordinary day, the Batman are just gonna like run the board. Yeah. And it was super fun. So I think battlefield conditions and then there were some crazy ones. You know, Atlantis made the whole map water. <sighs> yes, so, that one was nuts. The battlefield conditions in comparison to tarot cards, but this is also where they're kind of similar, are that you build your team very specifically around them. Most of the time, battlefield conditions, I think, affected, like, at least the very impactful ones, affected the map more so than the figures, which could then in turn affect the figures. Whereas tarot cards, I think, are direct to the figures. There's not really any tarot cards that change the map. Whereas that is true, you know what I mean? a lot of battlefield conditions specifically so you, affected the map. Yeah, there's like a handful of territories. There's like you, you know, like the map. Warzone made it so like support like was your damage value. There was another one like proximity mine or something where it like blew up and your team took damage. It was wild. So I think tarot cards similar in that regard where you build for it. So I I honestly want to say that tarot cards kind of are the updated battlefields, yeah. and if those aren't. I don't know if I necessarily I want to see an updated battlefield. You not know? really. No, not really. I think that's pretty fair, though. I think yeah. what you said, that's probably like right on. Um, Next up. Yeah, Matt Reed. What are your thoughts on playing a game on your phone when it's your opponent's turn? I don't think it's very respectful. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I don't think it's very respectful. Um, I used to... It's not very Dracula. It's not very Dracula. It's not very Dracula of you. Mm -mm. Uh, one venue I used to go to out in Rapid City, this guy, it was always on Mondays is when they played, so he would watch Monday Night Raw on his phone, and I was like, dude, this guy be the most disrespectful thing in the world, just go, stay at home, watch Monday Night Raw, or play Hero Clicks. don't, don't yeah. watch a video on your phone, it wasn't even like in between turns, it was like, he would take his turn, uh, yeah, I'm looking at Raw, I'm looking at Raw, you would take your turn, he'd be like, looking at Raw, looking at Raw, looking, oh yeah, whatever, looking at Raw, looking at Raw, I'm like, bro, come on, are you serious right now, Ooh. I was just like, dude, and okay, okay. It's not cool. Quick side note on that. What if they were playing WWE figures? Still not cool. Still not, Still not cool. cool. Okay. Pay, pay attention to the game. Okay. Maybe maybe I respect you a little bit more because I'm like, yeah. man, this dude really loves wrestling. He's really getting into He it. really <laughs> likes wrestling. Okay, okay. What if your opponent's also wearing a leotard? It's allowed. It's allowed. And okay. then it's allowed. So that's the steps you have to take, folks. And, and to then answer I'm, your question, Matt, that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. Uh, to add to that question, is the game Marvel Snap 
Uh, in what Matt is referencing, no, no, and the game is not Marvel. <laughs> I, think Star. It was, I think it was like Bejeweled Blitz, I, yeah, something, <laughs> something like that. Uh, I won't lie, when I first came down here to Omaha last October or whatever, Marvel Snap had come out like a few days before, and like I was like playing Hero Clicks against Simeon, but I was like, yo, we gotta finish this game. I want to play Marvel Snap, yeah. like, because that was like Bro, the addiction was fresh. I remember it was like it came out like late October, and I remember being at work. And if it was not busy that day, I was playing Marvel Snap for like my entire shift. It was, it was bad. Marvel like Snap I'd get all my stuff done, and then I would just like shut bro. the door and play Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap was bad addiction early on. Oh. Well, but, guys, all right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to Dial H for Hero Clicks. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And be sure to tune in to us on YouTube. You can check out the Facebook. We'll be posting there as well to the Clixies, the greatest show, the Hollywood night of Hero Clicks. We'll be dressed to the nines. We'll be talking everything Hero Clicks in uh, this last year's review. And that will be December 30th at 7 p.m. You will also have some crazy opportunities to win figures if you guys just fill out the survey linked below. And please just do it because it'll make the data more fun. And we'll also be kicking off the IPF, the International Player Foundation, year two that night. We've got some big announcements planned. We have even more stuff to give away. And we will have donations open for the first time in 2023 leading into 2024. It's going to be awesome, guys. It's going to be an amazing night, a great way to end the year, and I can't wait to see all of you guys in the chat there as well as count down the special night with Ian Simeon. It's going to be a blast. Like always, happy trails, happy holidays, and Merry Christmas. The show is over.